only because it was like coming later. So give me one second. Okay, meeting is, is going to be live stream. Got it. Okay. okay. Um, I hope we're going live. Yes, we are. Okay, so hello everybody. Adriana here, and uh, today I am welcoming Emma to tell you about her story. I think her story is very inspiring because she had incredible reasons uh, why she really wanted to start her health journey. But kind of instead of me talking about it, I would like to welcome Emma. Hello, Emma. Hi. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. So uh, your journey, how would you kind of describe your journey now as a whole? Um. It's really strange. I can't put my finger on if it feels like it's been forever or if it feels like it's been two minutes. It's such a strange kind of time scale. Um, but I don't know if that's because I'm, I'm just really set on there is no time scale. There's no there's no cut off point. There's no time scale. This is this is it. This is new stuff. <laughs> It's, it's because of when I asked you now, when I was kind of typing what the title is, and I said, my story, it's like, no, journey. And it's kind, of, it's kind of like, it is, it is a journey. Yeah. So, yeah. so kind of, before we kind of start, um, kind of me asking questions, uh, first, I'd just like to, to ask you, um, why did you decide to contact me? What was your reason? Well... I don't know if I'd reached, uh, I, I don't think I had a, a pinnacle moment of, I'm really sick of whatever it was. I've done that in the past where I thought, I'm really sick of myself. Um, really, you know, oh, I must do something. But it was really different this time. So I'd known you for ages and I'd followed all of your stuff. And, um, and then I think I just had a bit of a, a change of the way I was thinking already. And it was almost as if I'd done some accepting of who I was. So I was like, well, say like on social media, I'd already, I'd done a bit of a, um, a bit of an edit of things I, I was following and looking at. And I thought, if I'm going to be a big person, if I'm going to be fat, I'm going to follow lots of fat, fashionable people. And I'm going to see how I can dress for me. And it was almost as if, I, as soon as I started accepting exactly who I was and exactly what size I was, I then also decided to change. So it was like this acceptance. Okay, you're bigger. That's not a, it's not a sin. It's not terrible. It's just a thing. Um, and But then I decided to make a change. So there was that first of like accepting it and then making a change. Um, but I also think a lot of um, where I was working made me have a few moments of realization. So I was working in um, a funeral directors and it just, yeah, makes you have a bit of perspective when you see a lot of death um, and a lot of early, like young deaths where you think, wow, okay. Um, yeah. Um, because I really clearly can remember when you said to me, uh, you've seen uh, 13, 40 year olds mm. uh, kind of dying, and you just said they just died from the like diseases that were related to their, them being overweight. And you were like, Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when it's a lifestyle thing, some things are not, and, not, and it's still a person, and it's still incredibly sad. And sometimes it just gives you that jolt of thinking, Wow, okay not always thinking, well, that could never be me because it is somebody and it is somebody's family. And when you see their family too, and you think, mm, you know, what if, what if it doesn't have to be me? Um, so, yeah. So what was your life then? So let's say behind the June. So what was your life uh, lifestyle? What were you doing? How you were feeling? Um, very sluggish kind of person. Um, very, yeah, I don't think how I was in my head meets, was meeting up with how I was in my life. So in my head, I was, I liked exercise, but I wouldn't do it. 
So there was just the total mismatch, and there was a mismatch in a lot of things. Like, oh, I want an ordered life, I want organization, I want to be active at the weekend, but it wasn't happening. So I was telling myself a story in my head of who I, who I kind of really was, but it wasn't coming through in my actions. I think that's where I lived a lot of that. Oh, I'm this kind of person, but I'm not really. <laughs> and I just had to really take stock of that and say, you're actually not doing the things that you think you do. Mm. Can you now, when you're kind of looking back, kind of what, why do you think you didn't do? Uh, why didn't you kind of have an active life? So what was stopping you? I think because it, it seemed like such an overwhelming thing that the change had to be for life. Like for the rest of my life, I will have to be an active person. And that used to be like, oh my God, this is going to be forever. Like that was a really big thing. Um, now it's not, now it's not at all. So it used to, but it used to be like, oh, but when you make that change, you have to make that change forever. But I also think the ways I tried before was about cutting out a lot of things, putting in a lot of things. So it was overly complicated. And the idea of, I don't know, forever missing out on cake or something it used to be it used to be a let's cut lots of things out let's do lots more things and that became a bit oh, but that's for the rest of your life it can never slip up you can never and now just learn a totally different way which isn't overwhelming for life at all because really when you break it down it's very simple okay so when it comes to your eating so how was your eating then? What was your relationship with food? How did you manage stress, emotions? Oh, I definitely was a stress eater. Um, I would, I would overeat chocolate and crisps, all the classic ones. Late in the evening, after you've had a full dinner, I would, and I would plan it. It wasn't like it would just happen every night by accident. I would plan that. I would get the supplies in to do that every night without fail um yeah I definitely started stress eating chocolate when I was a childminder which I didn't like doing um love kids didn't like being a childminder at all and would when the children left I would I would plan to stress eat straight away um yeah so I just didn't pay attention to any of these habits of being really bad for my health long term but I also didn't pay any attention to why I was doing what I was doing I really thought I didn't dislike myself I remember when we first started you were like do you feel shame or hatred or whatever about your body and I was a bit like no I don't feel that but I wasn't really showing myself that I did like myself I was just ignoring everything and just a, like a numb ignore everything be numb about it just eat the chocolate there's no, there's no other way, right? That's just it. Okay, so how did you feel? Because you've got a son, next step. Yeah, yeah. So how did you feel as a parent? So what, what things that you would be able, what you were able to do then with him? Because obviously we're going to have a really nice conversation about it. That kind of really brought you into this journey. Yeah, yeah. Like, why? So tell me about it, Paul. Um, I, well things I was doing before I don't think I was really present with him a lot I didn't think I really realized what that meant I thought it was a bit of a forced thing um but just just running around with kids it's you know I would always kind of I would be in the background so as soon as anybody else is on the scene like Sally his other mom or my parents whatever I would be very hands-off and I would let them do everything say like a day at the beach we live really close to the beach let's go to the beach and if somebody else is there I would just not be active at all I'd be so tired and so lethargic and have let them they would be the one and I thought that was kind of okay because I was with him most of the time but then you realize I'm missing out on all of that good active stuff yeah that's where the that's where the enjoyment of the day is not oh I can relax and somebody else can go and do the active stuff Okay, so, and now, kind of when we fast forward, so from June to now, how much your life has changed since then? Um, without doubt, 
and it's no exaggeration I think absolutely every element of my life has changed um, and it's because my thinking has changed so my thinking has changed my actions have changed my actions meet my thinking um, I'm just a lot more clear on what I want to do what I like what I'm prepared to put myself through but also like a, a consistent approach to all things whether it's this whether it's learning whether it's my house, food, organization, stuff with Dexter, you know, it's just a totally different approach to life. And if somebody said, what are you aim for? And I'm thinking, but the aim is not a big thing in the future. The aim is this kind of content feeling every day. This is really nice. It's what you look, it's what I think I will look back on and say, oh, that was so that's really great part of life of finding your consistent joy every day because waiting for this happiness to arrive. I don't think I was particularly unhappy before. I wasn't like, I wasn't depressed and things like that, but there's, there's more, there's more that I could, be, could have been doing and now I'm doing it and now I'm feeling it as well. So can you tell me, uh, you mentioned that your thinking has changed. So, so what did you do that kind of made a shift for you? Um, writing things down has been really, really helpful for me and being honest on the page. So writing things to ask myself questions or you ask me questions, I'm writing them down and then I will answer them honestly. That's usually where I can unpick any, when I, when I find myself a little stuck or things have got harder, I write them down, usually where I can be honest. And it's usually not that complicated. It's, you know, Oh, why am I feeling like this? Hang on, hang on. Did I sleep well last night? No, I did not. Uh, okay, it's nearly always sleep. Um, yeah, so a lot of my thinking has changed from writing things down. I was a massive cynic about writing things down, journaling, meditation. I was so cynical about all of it. It's what other people did. It's not what I do. I have a heart stone. I don't have feelings. I don't cry. That was my kind of narrative about myself. Um, that I just was a bit like a bit of a hard case and I, I didn't do all these things I didn't need to do all these things but now I'm like yeah yeah it just brings me brings me the peace I find a lot of the way I'm thinking it's kind of a lot of it brings me peace and then in turn because I've got the peace I've got the energy so yeah and I'm just picking apart a lot of things of what I do and don't like things that you thought for 38 years that you you enjoyed and you when you start to question it oh, do I really <laughs> enjoy that a lot a lot of eliminate I mean you've definitely done a lot of elimination and that's kind of what yeah. I what I kind of like in kind of what I do it's to actually you get clarity what you really need for your life to feel better and what to eliminate kind of what kind of makes your life more toxic and just more difficult to handle so but I have to go back. So basically, everyone who is listening to this, uh, Emma, from the beginning, uh, she didn't want to talk about the weight. Uh, it was kind of completely secondary. And, and it was kind of because obviously she was losing weight as um, I'm going to say, as a side effect of her lifestyle change and her mindset change. But what I think is most of people struggle is it's kind of that weight loss, which obviously most women like to focus on it because it's the first thing it's a visible thing so what I think is you know I kind of really tried to kind of think in my head it's to kind of to change the conversation how we can actually lose weight but how we can make it more enjoyable when we change our focus on what we need to mm. change so but I kind of really want to just say so you have so how much how much you have lost so far since June Good. 31 pounds and I don't usually think in pounds um so it's about 13 and a half kilograms or two and a bit stone um yeah it's it's significant it's um yeah um but yeah a lot of the time I didn't want to talk about the weight or was it uh, because when I had focused on weight previously as the first and only and main goal then I'd always fallen off that or 
going back to eating and you know back to not exercising so with a different shift on it um but yeah but um, it's definitely it's worth celebrating because I can do more I can I can do more with my body I can you know so that feels really good to know that I've help I, my health is my health markers will be better because of what I've you know I haven't done it by starving myself or restricting or depriving myself I've done it by good eating um and like like moderate eating really I've never felt particularly hungry or like it's been really uncomfortable um and then movement just movement wouldn't even say yes exercise I'm doing exercise I'm going to the gym but movement I remember I did I think you did like a seven day movement challenge about a year ago so I, I did that with you and it's like a little free group and yeah just think reframing it and thinking movement is what you need every day in some form but what I want to ask you is I think this is what what a lot of people struggle with it's how on earth did you manage to lose that that significant amount of weight that obviously massively improved your health when it comes to your food intake. So what has changed? How did you change your mindset about food? And how much did you improve your relationship with food? And also, what has kind of how did it happen that you were able to, to change just the way how you eat? Um. So when I first started with you and um, we just kind of looked at whether tracking would be good for me. Um, and I know you've got quite an individual approach to everybody's different, you know, whatever issues you bring to the table, that will be different. But for me, tracking my intake, especially at the beginning and just tracking what I was eating and then looking at it honestly and being really honest with what you're putting down in the tracking app and then noticing that that was a lot. That was a lot of intake for me. Um, and th then from there, tracking has kind of worked for me because it it's just a tool. It's a tool to help me see what I'm eating in a day. And to be honest with it, and it's, it's simply that. So I know some people find it, it gets a bit much or they become some people might find it an obsessive thing. It's not that for me. It's just, I know that that's where I can be. That's where the honesty of what I'm eating can lie. So if there's times when I'm like, oh, why am I not this? Oh, okay, are you tracking? No, I'm guessing. Right, okay. And I just have these little conversations with myself. of like, am I guessing? Yeah. Is that a bad thing? It's not, but you're not going to progress further on if you want to lose any more weight. You know, I could say I'm fine where I am and I'll, I'll do maintenance here. That's fine. But, I, you know, I do want to continue. So um, tracking definitely works for me. And then just simplifying everything. So the app that you use on my on one of my tasks, it was just simply eat two big hands, handfuls of vegetables. Um, eat, a, eat a handful of vegetables per day with two meals. So that to me, it just simplifies it down. So that's really easy to do. If you start saying, you must have 10 fruit and veg, all different colors, it becomes really complicated. And I don't have a complicated brain. <laughs> I have a very, I have a brain that needs very simple things that, you know, how do you work at not being overwhelmed? Well, just give me really simple tasks. And that is one of them. So, so things like just, water hydration sleep food intake you know am i tracking it's neither good nor bad to track but it it, it just helps me um so it helps me see where i am and also i think the the calorie deficit that we set at the beginning was great i never felt hungry felt fine on it because i was probably eating more more vegetables and protein really concentrating on protein and then at some point when we increase that, yeah, again, great. 
So I remember that you were saying that before you were uh, eating like a bag of crisps per night. And yeah. so how were you able to just stop eating those crisps at night? I don't know. I think you hypnotized me. It was magic. I just stopped. I don't know. <laughs> Because that's the thing is that I kind of, I, I just think, I mean, it's funny because like lots of clients say to me, like, what have you done to me? But how do you think that you were just able to reduce that amount if that was such a habit? Well, what was the reason, you know, before you kind of had, you know, to overcome that habit, you had to have the thought process of like pausing and say, do I really need this? Yeah. Or, yeah. I think it was, the thought was, does this serve me? Um, yeah. So what, what purpose does this serve? Does it fulfill a need that could be met by, with something else? And it's always, yes, of course it could. So it's not my main meal. It's not, I'm hungry. It's, what is this doing? It's just a numb evening thing. Um, I mean, yeah. And then because I looked into the risk, you know, kind of, I don't not have sweet things. That's the thing. I don't say I don't eat chocolate. I don't eat... I probably have chocolate every day. I choose different things and they're lower calorie. They're still satisfying in that way. So I still have some, so the idea of that I stopped overeating in the evening, but I'm not restricting myself. Sounds like a contradiction, but the idea of restriction had to be lifted in order for me to, so I wasn't restricting in the day either. I was eating a breakfast eating a lunch eating a dinner and then yeah because I, I know I've talked about this quite a few times it's something that obviously plays on my mind and I'm not okay with it is that I have an allergy to nuts but it's a really recent allergy like in the last year and a half or something and it's just the one thing that I crave and it just shows that restricting and craving is you know that's they're two the same thing. So craving something is usually from, oh, I haven't let myself eat cake all week and I'm going to have a big binge on the weekend. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, I feel like that about, I could just dive into a jar of peanut butter and I, I can't, but that's where my brain goes, oh, I love that because I can't have it. Yeah. I want to ask you something because I think it's really important. So your journey has been months now mm. since June was that but I think you, you signed up for like late June it was yeah like it was the very end of June I don't think I started doing any action until July like anything because I, I did a little while of tracking of what I was just you, you said just track what you eat you were not going on a plan you're just tracking what you would normally do um yeah and then from there and really it's not a, it's no meal plan that's the thing I think not having a meal plan is, is helpful. But I want to ask you now something. In those five months, obviously, like, there's no journey going straight forward. So you had, call it blips or blocks, oh, yeah. or challenges. So what was the reason that now, when you're kind of looking back, mm. what was the reason that you had those challenges? What are they? Mm. and how did you overcome them um so some of the blips were linked to maybe what was going on emotionally and I was having a few things at work where I was just having a bad time um and some of the blips were physically where I've kind of hurt my back um but I think, I don't know, I think from the beginning, because I knew this was going to be a long, a long thing that I, I never, I always knew I was going to get back to it, back to feeling good. Because I don't know, it just feels like there's no, op no other option, but to get back to feeling good. So it's the feeling rather than that I must or I should. And then also trying to let go of the, if you've had a crappy week, with exercise and you haven't maybe hit what you usually hit I'm just starting to realize now that there's no point to saying oh I should have done that this week because it's gone it's done and beating yourself up about it doesn't help at all make yourself bad feel about feel bad about something in the past just doesn't help um 
it definitely hasn't helped me in the past of uh, yeah beat yourself up over what you didn't do so when we celebrate especially like you know we have like we have group chat and we have what we have what we are what was the wins this week but quite often they're not anything with weight related sometimes it can be about feelings or little breakthroughs in your head and things like that so um, now looking back and like working with me I'm actually I, I find it really the kind of kind of wrapping it up it's kind of like my program I just don't think it's kind of a program I just think mm. it's sort of like working with me yeah um, so I just don't know like, <laughs> yeah it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a program when people are like what do you what are you doing and I'm like oh, um, so what do you feel so I'm that, with this person and I'm like how do I describe this because the thing about the, the you know the the group the coaching chats that we have and then they're not really about food or weight mm. yeah. um then yeah it's not it doesn't feel so much like a program it feels different so what did you learn so what kind of since started working with me what were your kind of biggest insights biggest kind of breakthroughs that did you oh, um oh, just just to keep learning about myself about everything about what makes me feel good it is just going to be that's going to be forever there's no kind of set in stone um yeah it's just going to be yeah I always said I liked learning before but I don't think I really put myself in that and now I mean I'm going back to university so I need to like learning but even for that I think my approach is going to be so different so different of how I like keep on top of my stress and how I approach the learning process. Um, yeah, I just think my mind is totally, totally changed. So when people <laughs> have this nearly every morning where people say to me, oh, you're going to the gym. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to the gym. I'm like, I love it. I like it, but it's not even, and people say, well, you, you do get the feeling afterwards. And I'm like, I, I like it when I'm there as well. I like it when I'm there. So uh, those things have matched that that mindset and my actions have matched. I like exercise and I'm doing exercise. <laughs> and that sounds so simple, but that's like a major thing for me. That's a major breakthrough of saying I am matching up my what was in my head and how I thought I was to what I'm really doing. Um, I, I mean, it's just incredible. It's just it, it's just been amazing like just working with you for like such a long time and the thing is, is what I just feel with you it does feel it's an ongoing thing so yeah. there's no the timeline there's no okay until this point I want to be a certain way if you even said to me I don't want there was a point that I just like I was like your progress photos and I and I was like can I just comment on it or can I say something it's like <laughs> that's how much yeah. you, like I don't want to talk about it um yeah. the old me was a little bit like oh progress photos and oh I, you know when people would compliment on or say how you're looking or on your weight I'd be like oh and I think because my my old brain was saying you're going to fall off this at some point and then they'll then they'll notice that it's back or you know as if you're letting other people down it's like no it's got nothing to do with any of them so Bring on the compliments now. I'm like, I'm okay with it. <laughs> so if you're basically, if you're kind of like, now I have an opportunity to say to someone who is out there and who are, who are really struggling and who just feels so stuck. And so, I don't know, reverse back five months kind of when you were mm. in that place. So what would your advice to be to them? Just to get some help, really. I, I think I used to think that getting help for like a weight loss was um was something I should be able to just do oh look it's easy it's diet it's exercise I should be able to do that you shouldn't need help for that but really once you get the help and it brings it just it brings me a lot of peace which I keep saying so but if you can have peace around food around eating around you know when people talk about comfort eating but if you can get true comfort without it bringing you any shame or discomfort or guilt afterwards 
then that's fantastic. So just take the action and get, get some help from somebody who can really bring you the peace by, by learning, by the education side of it, you know, the, the learning about different mindsets and things can change. Your brain can change, definitely. And then the body follows and it just follows because, because you want to take more action. Well, I did. So. <laughs> um, and now just kind of to, to wrap it all up, how would you say that you feel about yourself? With what feelings or emotions are you living day-to-day -day life? And then just the final thing, how is the motherhood now? And <laughs> questions, what kind of like to do? <laughs> how do you feel about yourself now? What is the main emotion or how do you feel every day? And what, how do you feel about motherhood now? Um, I feel really good about myself. Uh, I thought I didn't dislike myself before, but I, I think in hindsight, I, I did, but it was just, um, and a lot of that was in my head, but it's that it's kind of doing all of the things I've done with a compassionate view towards myself. So as women, we are very hard on ourselves and we probably learned it from many generations ago um, but I feel really good towards myself really um, even looking at those before photos like I was saying to you I'm just I'm not gonna hate that I'm not gonna say oh god look what I look like or how I felt then because it, that wasn't that long ago and I took the action that person took the action and you can only do your best at the time so for a while, you know, for even for if you're doing your best for 10 years and, and you go, oh my God, I feel like I've woken up out of being in a big slouchy coma for 10 years. Okay, but try not to hate that person because that person was doing their best at the time. Exactly. Um, so I think I'm just, and that, that's changing my view of other people as well and how they approach things and, and that kind of compassion. Um, yeah. So what was the second question? <laughs> so wait, it was like the first question is how do you feel about yourself? Yeah. How do you feel now every day? Yeah, I feel good. Um, I wake up, uh, I don't spring out of bed. I'm not gonna lie. I'm still not great in the morning. Uh, you know, that's not happened yet. Um, but I just, yeah, I feel different. My energy throughout the day is, is just there, I was saying. I think I said to you a little while ago, I was like, oh, I remember those days where I used to have that post-lunch, like, ugh, and that's not a thing. That's not a thing now. Um, yeah, so energy is just really different. I don't feel like I'm having to, I don't force myself to go and do things. I'm just getting it done. And then I'm always glad I got it done. So whether it's exercise, walk, organizing something, Whatever it is, I'm just like, yay. Um, which then, like the whole parenthood thing is just a different different thing now, I think, yeah. And if I can model the food and the, and the body stuff with Dexter, then yeah, that's great. Because oh. I feel like he was, he, he like, I think kids like are naturally, they're naturally energetic. They're naturally, he's always just, eaten to his appetite we've never pushed him to finish a plate or any of that and no and so he's naturally kind of where I want to be so I learned so much from him yeah I always think like oh kids got so much energy and I'm like oh well yeah let's learn from that let's yeah so it's great yeah Emma I thank you so much for sharing your incredible story no, uh, really. you know, just, go, just going to give women out there uh, just an opportunity to see that they can change as well and I think it's what I really love about your journey it's it's health focused it's mm -hmm. and it's as well like a long term with no timeline on it and uh, and I just want to thank you so much uh, so for coming here and sharing and, and just 
being honest and actually um, allow me to question you. <laughs> it's like a, a, for like a job interview. Um, so you get the job. Yes. You yes. Yeah, you've got, you've got a job. Um, <laughs> so, but thank you so much. It's honestly, it's it's still well, we're still working together. So it's, yeah. it's, it's like incredible, in, incredible pleasure to kind of. You're going to get me in the student years. We'll see how I do then. <laughs> There will be like basically a lot of check-ins, um, but thank you so much. And I just kind of want to say to everyone out there, if anyone has got any questions, you can just like pop in the comments below. I know that I need to ask that at the beginning, but if you have got any questions and then if Emma sees it, so maybe she can answer, answer it. And also if you would like to work with me, I'm just going to post the, the link below where you can literally just book a 30 minute uh, free call. And then we can literally just see if uh, I can help you or not. But for now, Emma, Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Thank you. I'll, I will speak to you next week. <laughs> and um, and I'm wishing you a lovely, lovely day. You too. And I'm going out to sunbathe <laughs> on the roof <laughs> with the blankets on. <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Emma. Well, and everybody else, uh, I'm wishing you all a fantastic day. And I'll speak to you soon. And Emma, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.